Hey, welcome everyone to Agile in the Finance and Accounting KPO World by Ken and Sayali. We are glad that both Ken and Sayali can join us today. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the part of the world. A very warm welcome from both of us, me and Ken. So let me introduce myself. I'm Saili, Saili Thite from India. Uh, I'm an agile coach uh, with Metro Global Solutions uh, on a professional front and uh, an art lover uh, on a personal front, along with being mother to two teenagers, a husband and in-laws. And Ken? Over to you. Yes, my name is Ken, Ken Vira, here sitting in Germany, Düsseldorf. And uh, yeah, my title is Head of Transformation Innovation. So I'm doing partly agility, new way of working, also doing a lot of uh, key account management and project management here in, in from Germany up, and leading the team in Pune. Yeah, on the private side, I also love doing paragliding. So next week, if everything goes well, I can do another paragliding session in France, hopefully. Hopefully the weather plays along. <laughs> Super. All right, thanks, Ken. So uh, today we'll be uh, we'll share our experience uh, of our transformation journey uh, in the finance and accounting space in the KPO world. So let's begin. So do you know which metro we are? Uh, on the screen, you will see three metros: Metro Shoes, Metro Wholesale, and Metro Rail. So let us check via Mentimeter. Uh, please hmm. click on menti.com and use the code. Yes, I added in the chat um, a, a link also. Yes. Directly you can use that one. Otherwise, if not, um, yeah, like Saidi said, menti.com. And then there is a code in case the link doesn't work, but yes. ideally. Otherwise, you can write also in the chat. In the chat box. I'll stop sharing my screen so that uh, Ken yes, can so... share. All right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Metro Shoes, we have one. And then we have Metro Cash and Carry. The one selected Metro, the train. <laughs> so far. If you want also in the chat, you can, um, you can add it in case the link doesn't work. have one entry in chat mm. yeah i see it also <laughs> if you want shelly you can reshare i can just say the numbers say it again you can reshare the powerpoint slides again yeah, yeah. Hmm. yes so basically um <laughs> b is the correct answer Right. Yes, if you go to the slides. Yes, yes. Okay. So we are this, we are this metro, metro cash and carry. We are into the wholesale business uh, with the restaurant owners. So this is what we are. So I hope you remember us as this metro. <laughs> All right. So who are we? Uh, we are uh, Metro Business Solution Center, part of it. And we are born out, we call ourselves and we are born out of a global giant. Uh, we call ourselves a global startup uh, with a you know very traditional customer. So the entire process started in um, 2011, where we wanted to uh, kind of disruptly innovate the finance uh, technology. So transform, uh, a manual scattering, you know, uh, accounting organization into a holistic, robust organization that uh, people, process, and technology at the center. So we have reinvented ourselves, and uh, uh, that's how we are now called a business solution center. We believe uh, in more in learning organization, being a learning organization. So that's how our transformation journey. Uh, is all about. Uh, we have a presence um, in Germany, 
and India. In India, we have two offices in Pune and in Bangalore. Uh, so uh, the motto is that, um, you know, uh, we have a global vision uh, to be a fluid global team. We, we say it that way. And um, our customers are spread across the world. And so now uh, handing over to Kent for uh, some more pieces of information. Yes, Kent, yes. over to you. Basically, most of you came here because of, um, ah, can you still screen, share the screen? Um, yeah. We're talking about uh, the knowledge, the KPO, right? So knowledge processing operations. And um, yeah, and that's why we also wanted to show, can you share the screen, Sally? So you can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, thanks. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, if you just go to the next slide. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, so we said like why uh, KPO? I was also silly when she brought it the first time. I was like, oh, are we in the KPO? Because for us it was just, okay, we, we have a, a project and we were looking at this. And yes, we are looking at the finance and accounting area. And, um, and then you could say, hmm, this area, isn't it? If you will look at the next slide, isn't it uh, very clear that it's a very, you know, from our Stacy matrix, which we love in agility, isn't it in the simple area down there? So um, why even bother to think we should do agility in this area? Um, but if you can see also, um, if you look at from the KPNG pictures, which is coming up next, is that, right, everyone is being affected by digitalization and uh, surely also the financial area is also getting uh, affected um, since also a lot of RPA automation is coming in, which we also then attended to do. Um, and there's a lot of regulation coming where now it's not paper anymore. It has to be digital. Um, they have to show and so on, so on. So, and this is making it more and more. It's not in that simple area anymore. And now it's starting to move. Right. So uh, we put some little animation in there. So it, it started, it was simple. Then it went to complicated. And then we realized now with adding more and more dig digitalization and also, um, the automation, it became actually more and more complex. And then we said, for this, we need some transformation in the finance area. And we had a lot of uh, first thing, we talked with the uh, CFOs in the countries, uh, also here in the board member in Düsseldorf. And we said like, we definitely need to change something because um, how we do it until now, it, it doesn't fit anymore. And then all of these elements, basically ingredients came together, realizing, yes, we, um, we need to renew how we interact with our customer. And here we're talking internal customers. So as a country, we're serving them. So here we have to see how it, we can do it differently. We look at also on how to do the reduction in the process and the plans. And then surely now, since it's not only the country and, and Pune, but we also have the digital uh, department, which is needs to be involved. We said we cannot just have one times meetings, but we need to create a cross-functional and a self-organized team and then because we don't know what's happening like always <laughs> we need to embrace creativity we have to see what else can we do uh, the layer of management we wanted to reduce and also then we said we definitely need to collaborate more and then all of this we said doesn't it sound very typical that this is an agile transformation why don't we do it and then we looked at the agile values i don't have to tell uh, anyone here your folks that what is it so we will deep dive later but we looked at the values, we looked at the principles, and then we were thinking like, okay, which part of it should we do? While doing this um, thinking, we realized, first of all, if we think of our customer, like with whom we are working in this KPO, so with the finance and accounting, we realized first thing first, like if we look at actually uh, where agility is normally being done in the IT industry, it's more like a food truck. Why am I comparing this? Because our customers is also normally uh, hotel, restaurants, uh, catering. So they buy a lot in the wholesale. Um, so that's why we took this picture as a metaphor to say in the software industry or in, um, in IT, we are used to changes, right? There is an update coming tomorrow, something else changes. So we are used to like this food truck. Now I'm standing here, there's this customer. Now I'm the next day I'm moving somewhere else. It's a different customer. So 
it's quite comfortable with uh, having changes. Maybe today it's in this city, in one week it's a different city. Maybe they buy in metro store, but the metro store is different in sometimes in different cities. So they're used to this, you know, feeling of uncomfortable. But if you look at now in the finance and accounting, we took the metaphor saying like it's more like a restaurant. People are set, you know, the process is quite set. The menu is set. Yes, maybe there are some special cards, but it's like the base it is set. So they don't like so much changes. We even had one stories here. We had a project since the... Um, they have been doing a process in 20 years. And then we said like, ah, uh, so what should I do here with the uh, finance process? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just print it out, put the sign on it, put the number on it, and then send it back to us. And when they got it, they print it out again, <laughs> write something in it and then scan it again. And then, you know, and we were like, oh my God, okay. Looks like if we go to the dig digitalization area, there's need to be some changes. And that's why we said, it's crucial that we really pick them up where they are and slowly bring them to this uh, different way of working, which is agility. And then we said, okay, we really should emphasize on the uh, upcoming um, ingredients where we said, definitely we need to focus first on the individual interaction over the process and tools. And we also said like, we definitely need this customer collaboration because before it was, you know, everyone was just there. The people in Pune, they were just doing stuff and doing it for France. And it was just being done that way and somehow it works. But they were not really talking. It was more like a contract. You have some SLAs and it was not really working together. And that's why we said, let's take the principles. We should work together. We should also invite everyone. So we also invited the CFO and all the head offs and so on, so on of finance at the beginning to maintain that constant pace. And then we also said we need a team which works together closely because this change is not going to just happen. We need them to work very close. And then we have different teams who will also show later how it went. And this face-to-face -face con conversations and also that we have the classical where we bring teams together and they can reflect and do retros. And definitely we need them to build trust because, like I mentioned before, the simple invoicing which they had to you know, print it, write something, scan it again, changing something in between they don't like it too much so we also like trust in this because automation was something new all of them were like yeah we know it's coming but we don't like it so we also said let's emphasize that we all together work on this and it's not blaming each other and so on and then we said this is super crucial we should do it yeah and handing over now to Sayali will share more about what we exactly mean with this in every step of our journey yes Thank you so much, Ken. Hmm. All right. So for us, as Ken, Ken mentioned, um, it was super critical um, that we analyze things, uh, the current situation. So uh, what we did, we tried to analyze the current model, working model that we were working with. And we realized, why didn't it work for us? We had to give a thought to it. So uh, there were meetings happening. Uh, there were hurdles happening. However, um, something was missing and which was collaboration that we realized. So the focus was more on, you know, uh, who did what rather uh, who didn't do it right was more of a focus. So it was a more of a blame game. So um, we thought that this needed a change. Uh, this was more very, very technical uh, meetings that were happening. And just imagine, you know, the entire team is spread across all, you know, three different countries. So it, there was a absolute disconnect in everything. With this, of course, the uh, byproducts were high attrition, no learning, teams were not happy. This was uh, the byproduct of uh, all this. So uh, we thought that, you know, we should, we should do something. And uh, this, inspired us that uh, uh, Albert Einstein said that learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. And important thing is uh, stop and ask questions. So, uh, you know, uh, we took a pause here and we retrospect ourselves and saw, uh, can we do something better so that we can improve? Uh, that's how it instigated us to uh, think more and yes, we found our ways to handle uh, the situation. Um, 
we worked upon it, uh, our working model, and we thought that we should keep people uh, at the center of the model and then work upon. So we took the collaboration uh, principle of us very seriously. Uh, we designed uh, this kind of working model where, you know, there is a circular collaborative circles uh, where teams are uh, working holistically with each other. So there is no me, me, uh, me, my work, my team. It, it is not that, it is our. So we move from me to we, and uh, the circles had uh, different roles were uh, designed, uh, designated to them. And uh, with this, we thought that uh, people will start taking the ownership uh, of their own, own work. They'll start feeling it and then taking the ownership. So most importantly, we wanted them to enjoy the work they are doing, not just that nine to five typical job that they come, they do and they go. So there has to be some involvement. And this is where uh, we thought that this model of us, the circular model will work for us. And also um, we thought that the, lead, the uh, hierarchy has to blur. You know, there is uh, in the leadership, we uh, we observe there is a control that every every leaders uh, every leader want to feel it. So we thought that is also a, uh, one of the factor that pulls the entire system down. And it is because of maybe, you know, there is no trust both the ways. So uh, this model did work for us. And the byproduct, was, of course, was the uh, reduced uh, attrition, I would say. And uh, this overall, the uh, team started looking happier and uh, the organizational uh, organization became more productive, I would say. So uh, we took agile uh, values and principle really, really, really seriously uh, when we started. Uh, so how do we do it? But, you know, though we took it seriously, how did we implement this? We, we know our pain areas now and we need to overcome it. So uh, what we did is uh, we got uh, approximately 30 people from three different countries in Pune. We gathered them together. And uh, we organized a uh, co-working week for everyone, you know, abiding the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, collaboration or face-to-face -face communication. We thought this will work. And uh, it's not about only a gathering uh, or doing all those scrum training sessions and team building events. It's not that we were focusing on the, you know, human part of everything. So, uh, Processes, you need not tell um, uh, the KPO industry because this is a very methodical industry. They have six Sigma, uh, you know, all Sigma projects uh, run here. So that's not an issue here. The issue is uh, the human connect. That disconnect had to be, uh, you know, sealed upon. So what we did is we got them together in Pune. And of course, we talked about work, definitely. You can, uh, we sense that when everybody on the first day came in the meeting room, there was sudden silence and uh, still people were sitting in their own country groups, you know, they were still not gelling up. So uh, we thought um, this is not working. So we took everybody out of the room. We went for dinners and lunches and heritage walks and gardens and where not so that people mingle upon mingle with each other we travel you can see the, the photograph here we travel in auto rickshaws as well so uh, one of the incident i would like to share is um, ken was the key person to do this uh, is we had been to aga khan palace in pune where mahatma gandhi ji was prisoned uh, here for his um, fight for the independence of india so um, ken asked everybody a question that uh, this is the value for which uh, you know gandhi ji was um, present so what is that for which value you will be present for so we we never think that we we will be present right so uh, this was very thought provoking for everyone that uh, okay so the values started coming out people started opening up there was a big silence for some time however you know the next day we could see a cheer in the room people started had started already mingling with each other so at times classroom 
or a typical uh, you know official work environment does not work the human touch is really really uh, important for each one of us and uh, we as a human we love to be uh, empathetic and to be cared also so uh, you know even further uh, when we started um, we went to our uh, people went to the countries and we started working the model had uh, such a thing that you check in uh, asking uh, how was your weekend uh, how was your mood or how is your mood with which you are checking in so then people uh, started feeling that connect that i am important i am also there so people are cared about me they are empathetic about me and this culture made a big difference so uh, the challenge that we addressed is people more on people and this is how this a uh, co-working week uh, made a big difference um, in our working model so yeah, yes maybe uh, just to yeah yes yeah, to add to it so basically in that um, we even at moment when we were in that uh, where mahatma gandhi was present even some of the colleagues were you know having some tears because they were thinking of that deep deep topic which they would go to jail to and then we were also witnessing that other were sharing this so this was like really the team building where we you know when we have that base which is very we know each other and not knowing just okay what's your name and what do you like to eat but to go to that deeper layers it really helped in the further discussions because then if there's some difficult uh, situation it's not just um you know you because you know deeper it's not just like a colleague anymore it's almost like a friend that you know like ah oh, okay that was important for that person that's why they're actually sometimes fighting more in in discussions because for them this and this was important so this was really the moments where we realized yeah taking that serious to have a face to face and really spend time many times they were saying like ah doing the stupid icebreakers asking this questions you know like what did you do weekend or we every time we thought of something different they thought like it's a waste of time at the beginning but then when they realize actually this is you know we, people come they always when they when they come to that meeting they're like ah oh, okay first arrive and then now let's talk about work but first the private stuff but we also made sure that not every meeting now we you know overdid it and it's all the time doing uh, icebreakers and having these questions but from time to time and also from depends on the like also with the head offs we had this where we really spend and then we can go to that levels discussing about deeper topics so what is actually not working here so that question is not just like yeah i'm blaming you but it's like mm, yeah true that's true what can we do about this and that's why it was super crucial what we're sharing next now um so back to you sally is about how we changed the, the whole structure of the of the teams yes the basic idea for, for us was uh opening up the people because generally they cage themselves um, you know with the with their thoughts the the way they are so this did help us a lot and um, moving forward uh, how did we change uh, the way we work and our structure so uh, this is the way uh, we worked in the circle so there are different circles that we had created there's automation circle there's an operation circle there's a support circle where you know uh, the hr the quality uh, the trainer training department the agile coach and scrum masters we we all are you know supporting uh, these guys to uh, work upon so uh, people were also uh, i would say when we integrated the jobs uh, we created the roles they were little scared uh, of it that will we lose our jobs in this especially the middle management uh, so we had to create that uh, awareness work upon it create growth paths uh, in the entire circle where uh, we included the uh, legal people as well so uh, this structure uh, helped us uh, in you know um, achieving our uh, vision that on people front we have a, a global teams uh, which are created processes uh, on process front we wanted to simplify and standardize the processes uh, and be a you know solution provider uh, on technology part we wanted to be uh, a piloting enterprise uh, with rpa for all the uh, entire metro so it was a big shift for uh, metro uh, for uh, becoming you know pioneering partners from uh, business providers to uh, solution partners so it was a big change 
However, uh, though the global structure was done, uh, unless we do day-to-day -day things, uh, things don't change. Uh, I hope everybody, I'm sure rather everybody would agree. So uh, we do uh, planning theoretically, you know, all the planning is done, but we need change that actually happens locally. So, um, you know, from uh, the team, we, we all know these stages from forming to performing what happens. Uh, so we need standoffs, we need retrospectives, we need uh, you know, ceremonies are super important for all of us uh, to be an effective team. Team bond is something uh, really important that developed here. Uh, and especially post COVID, uh, this hybrid working model, it is a challenge that we found. You know, our team did uh, actually did a fantastic job uh, in getting uh, the team together, conducting uh, conducting these daily huddles, uh, their brainstorming sessions, uh, may, be it uh, building uh, connections, be it ice, uh, conducting icebreakers, and that to handling different countries. So uh, the team has played a super important role here, and uh, that's how you know, we, we could achieve um, uh, the vision that we were looking at. And uh, I would, uh, I want to show the, the toolbox that we used uh, for, uh, for achieving this. Uh, so we tried to establish, uh, you know, the new ways of working where um, we developed um, common OKRs, we had daily huddles. But where did we do all this? So we, we, we all are into agility. So we know we did maturity assessment. We did quarterly maturity assessment so that we, you know, in the iterative form. So we keep doing it. We had uh, planners uh, with us. So we used uh, the Miro board as well to conduct retrospectives. Miro board, I'm sure you must be knowing it's a digital whiteboard that we have. Uh, we used uh, Microsoft Teams uh, planner for uh, handling the day-to-day -day task uh, very efficiently. It worked for us. Uh, we had a channel uh, for um, in the Microsoft Teams where we had created different types of tabs. Uh, the meeting invites were posted there. So basically what I'm trying to say is we created uh, a one-stop shop for the countries. So every country had their own channels. They knew what is happening in the team. So no more they were working in silos and they had uh, every information available uh, at one place. So this did help us and um, moving forward. Um, now, uh, now that the teams moved uh, towards performing and we had few numbers, now it was time to uh, show our visibility and accountability um, to our super bosses as well. So every country, uh, this is the snapshot that um, we just posted it here that how did we do? So we uh, developed different KPIs for the countries. We, we mentioned that how many scrum events we did uh, for a particular country. Then these were the few KPIs um, that we developed for each country. So one was transformation KPI, one was team energy, one was teams availability, time availability, productivity, and OKR settings. So uh, this is how uh, you know our super bosses um, uh, got the snapshot of it. And also the technical uh, technicalities of it, uh, uh, how was the process uh, improvement? Were any best practices shared? Was there any you know, uh, you know invoice extraction? All these technical things were also uh, mentioned there. So in one slide, they got uh, the entire snapshot. If they wanted to deep dive, we all we had our scrum boards um, on Microsoft Teams. We had our retrospective uh, um, on the Miro board. So everything was um, visible for everyone. So there was no disconnect. So uh, even yeah. the leaders knew everything. Can you want to add something? Correct. And why, right, you would say, oh, no, but is it not over documenting again? Are we not going back into that old uh, way of working? But here where we realize, because it is the KPO area, so finance and control accounting, because they're used to, right? They're used to their, their nature of work is we 
trust is like when we can control, we can trust. So we also, they needed to know, oh, okay, show us some numbers. So what do you mean with this, right? And then so we, that's why we, this is why we showed it to everyone here is the importance to still use that language which they have, so which they understand, right? Because we could have used a burn down child and burn down chart and something like this, but then they would be like, what are we burning down, uh, right? So it's more like, okay, no, this is the numbers and data you used to know. And since this was also uh, digitalization and automation, so we knew we are going into that, um, there are still invoices, which is going to be manual and partly it's going to be um, automated. So then they also wanted to know like, is everything running fine? Because this is like, there's a very specific financial impact, right? If this doesn't work out, we have to do something. And everyone was nervous anyhow from the beginning, like, oh my God, this, this is gonna be, bad and we, we're going to lose and like monies and we're going to be fined or whatever. So this is how we wanted to just to show them saying like, yeah, we are open and showing to everyone how it is going. And um, that's why we, let's say, use this old still reporting kind of style. And we will also later show some more um, this kind of um, where we just saw that it's important to share uh, because they're used to this. So we slowly pick them up and still use some of the old elements. Yes, thanks for adding yeah. that, Ken. Yes, so we saw the changes. Uh, we say, um, The transformation was uh, quite visible, I would say. And uh, as Ken mentioned in his uh, earlier talk that now the Agile values were coming together. Now that we have uh, gone through all that customer collaboration and everything, now it was time to see the working product and responding to change as well. So, and of course, uh, the result was, um, expected result was satisfied customer, working software, you know, uh, we deliver frequently and consistently as well. Uh, are people um, responding to change or reacting to change? Are they welcoming the uh, changes, uh, the team itself? Are we striving for um, the excellence? And is there a simplicity in our processes? This was a time to uh, check on this. So uh, let's see what we achieved. So this is what we uh, achieved. You may uh, you know, uh, see a few gra graphics here. So uh, you may notice that automation rate uh, you know, increased as compared to the targeted automation rate in all the three countries. Our NPS score, uh, that is the customer satisfaction score, did increase here. Whenever, wherever we have added the new roles, you know, be it solution owner, be it uh, techno functional experts, uh, you know, with the ability uh, to tackle the problem solving uh, on their own. So we we achieved this. Team designed their OKRs and measured. Um, measured it also to track the progress. So they did it everything on their own. With this, we, we saw that the team spirit and motivation was absolutely on a high note and they became more, um, I would say, uh, self-sustained and automation um, moves away uh, from, you know, from people dependent to process dependent. So it was no more a uh, people dependent one, which was a very happy situation for the organization. And automation in all three countries became stable, which was super critical for uh, the process. And of course, the regular audit, audit checks were uh, kept us on track. Moving a little forward, um, you may see these are few visuals where we can see a good improvement on people process and technology front. So on technology front, our automation rate increased on people front, our um, quarterly maturity assessment showed us that uh, there is an improvement in self-organizing team. There was a uh, good clarity people had. So we, we could achieve the transparency there and culture of the team as well. On the process front, um, Improvement areas were identified, improvised, and you can see yeah. our bots were stabilized, which was super important for the team. Yeah, and maybe just to add there, right? So this yeah. is, I mean, we know it in agility, like it totally makes sense. And that's why it is like that. 
but since we brought people together there were so many new improvement projects right so many things popped up new because suddenly they sat together and then they really really talk about saying like yeah this and this this doesn't work and before they said it also but somehow it never came right because yeah the the let's say the managers were meeting they didn't really understand what the problem was they just said something so but since now all the relevant people the experts are sitting together they could really say this doesn't work that doesn't work and then ah okay now i understand what you mean with this and they could really come up with new stuff so this was really the power of um yeah being bringing everyone together which we know already but this is also then they saw that this works and even today many times people who were in that group still they were like ah cannot we in different areas they want to also implement this way of working which is then more in that agility which they saw and, and they want to do it yeah so basically um that's just giving the overview of all that um what we have been implementing so far um if we, right, so we if you see the next slide, it's just again, so we just basically we just took all the values and took all the principles and just took them really serious and just said, like, what if, if we really do it? Because many times in the training, also before, right, it's like, yeah, yeah we understand this, but uh, do we really do it? And we said, yeah, this time we really look at this. And we also saw that that's why that over is important, right? So individual and interactions over processes and tools doesn't mean that we don't do it anymore, but it's, it's still super crucial that we still do whatever processes is there from the past and need, still needs to be done because also in finance and accounting, uh, there is always some legal stuff where we have to follow and then very crucial. And uh, since money is going around, <laughs> also very crucial that everything works. So this is uh, where we just took everything and saying like, yeah, we need to still follow a plan, but we need to be able to respond to change. And yes, we do have a contract negotiated. We have an SLA, how fast we have to deliver something with the, um, as an example, invoices. But still, we can collaborate with the customer. And sometimes they understand, like, ah, oh, yeah, something's happening. Or we can now, they also now understand, right? I mean, this is like simple, but strength, very strong. It's like, ah, uh, before they didn't really understand maybe like how important some festivals were. So now they understood it more and they could plan it ahead and saying like, ah, okay, the festival is coming up. We understand that it's important for the colleagues. So how can we manage it that it doesn't slow us down? Do we increase the volume before? Do we do it afterwards? But everyone knew and understood each other better and could really work on it. So there's no more blaming, but it is really collaboratively working together and trying to solve always a problem. Yeah, so. Basically, this picture is just to show right before it started, it was a restaurant. Now it's more becoming again um, a hybrid model of it. So it can move, but it still has some stability. So um, and yeah, the customer and everyone else is still happy um, working together. So this was the idea just to show that picture at the end, taking the elements, but still adjust to that area because we cannot take agility one to one. Uh, which we are doing in the IT industry to other industries because they need some adaption. But we still have to be true to it <laughs> because as we saw in the stories we were telling, it really works. And yeah, that's why basically how it went. Yes. So we would like to uh, end with a quote that um, culture does not change because we desire to change it. Culture changes when the organization is transformed. The culture reflects the realities of the people working together every day. So for us, what worked when we worked on people? Thank you, everyone. Hmm, thank you, everyone. Hey, thanks, Ken and Sai Lee for sharing your experience with us today. Mm -hmm.